guys, welcome to the video. I'm in here today is going to be the first of maybe two or three tutorials that I'm going to do regarding the 505 Kexploit for the PS4. And in this video here, we are going to cover the user guide method, the easy version of the user guide method for today. And we're going to be covering some other things. We're going to talk a little bit about FTP, uh, the PKG games, you know, a couple of things on what to do, what not to do, how to set up your system. We're going to block uh, the updates from happening so you don't accidentally update your system. And we are going to unlock your browser so it's permanently unlocked. Even if you update later on to another firmware, it should remain unlocked. And yeah, so a few things that we are going to cover. So there's a little bit of housekeeping we need to get done first. I'm not going to explain how, but you should already know and you should have updated your system to 505 firmware. So let me go ahead and let me go into the settings to show you how mine is set up. All right, so here we go. This is how I have this set up on this PS4. You can see the 505 uh, is there and also one thing that you're going to want to do is go into automatic downloads and you should make sure that everything is unchecked we can take this online anyway so um, yeah I would recommend that you leave everything unchecked in these boxes let's go ahead and head back to our um, home screen here on the PS4 all right, so let me get started by first explaining that there are a couple of methods on how to do this, um, like I mentioned earlier. The method we're doing today is the user guide method. Now, the other method is the web browser method, and that is where you can, after you've updated to 505, you can get into your web browser, and then you can point it to an address uh, that you know, maybe is hosting the Kexploit and the files and the apps or whatever, and you can just use them right from there. What's great about this is that this method allows you to host your own files. So whatever apps or homebrews you want to use, you can put them on your phone, tablet, PC. You can even put them on like a you know small USB stick and stick it in your router if your router has some USB ports and you can you know read the files from there. You have a lot of uh, a lot of versatility, a lot of control, and you put whatever apps you want and that you want to use. And believe me, there'll be a lot that will be coming out. The problem is that many of you, when you're doing this, will not initially have the browser um, usable. It, it won't be enabled. And you know, you or you try to go to a URL and you can't because it's not enabled. So in that case, how do you use the Kexploit if you can't use the browser, if it hasn't been enabled? That's where the user guide method comes in, which is what we're doing today. And there are two versions of this, the easy version and the harder version. Today we're going to do the easy version. The harder version involves you installing Python on your PC as well as XAMPP or XAMPP, whatever it's called. And yeah, it involves a few more steps. Um, and I will do that tutorial later on. That'll probably be the last tutorial I do. For today, I'm going to show you the easy method, and it will unlock your web browser and permanently enable it. From that point on, you can continue using this method I'm showing you, or you can just follow tomorrow's video that will show you how to host your own files since your uh, browser will be enabled from this point forward. Okay, so let's move on to what we need to set up. All right, so right now we're going to go ahead and go into settings. And then what we are going to do is we're going to head down over to network. We're going to do a setup internet connection and pick your preference here, whatever it is you're using. I strongly recommend that you use the LAN cable. That's what I'm using uh, for better results, but it's up to you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick that for now. Then we're going to go into custom. Here on IP address, pick automatic. Then DHCP will be do not specify. And here on DNS settings, we will go into manual. And then you can go ahead and type in the address. Uh, the address is the way you see them here, or the IP addresses, whatever. So go ahead and put those in. If you can't see them or whatever, look down in the description. I will have them down there for you. Now, once you've done that, let's move on over to next. This will be automatic proxy server do not use I don't need to test it let's go ahead and go back back again now we're gonna scroll all the way up to user guide help info 
and then we're going to go into the user guide and if you did everything right this is what you should get so some of you may already know um, Al Azif if you don't um, yeah he's been on the scene uh, for a while uh, and seems pretty trustworthy for sure so anyway he has um, the um, the files here hosted on his server you're on 505 always make sure you pick 505 stuff do not pick anything from the other categories so now that you pick 505 you see you have some choices here and this will probably grow later on as more stuff is added I would recommend that you run the blocker first now I've already done it when you hit the blocker just wait until it says done um, you'll get the little the little circular thing spinning around and it should say done if it gives you um, some type of message just hit OK or whatever and then just come back to it and just let it um, you know let it run again until it says done what the blocker does is that it will prevent you from accidentally updating your system even if you download it if you downloaded a, um, a an update and it's lingering in your system and it keeps asking you do you want to update now and install it or run it even if you accidentally select yes and it starts to install it the install will not finish and it will not uh, update your system uh, and then you have FTP here which you can use it whenever you want and we're going to touch on that here in a little bit and then you have uh, Mira which is the hen right and that's what's going to enable the debug settings and everything on your PS4 so let's go ahead and let's check that let's select Mira there we go and on the first try all set now when you run this and you see the you're set there press the PS button on your controller to minimize this all right now let's go back into settings and now we're gonna scroll all the way down and there we go there are the debug settings okay now here if you have an external hard drive you can start downloading package files like package games or whatever I don't promote or condone or whatever um, no piracy so you should own the games of course. hard copies you can put these package files onto the root of your EX fat formatted USB hard drive you can format it in your windows or you can use something like mini partition tool or partition tool wizard or whatever it's called um, there's a million different one ways to do that so you just want to format it to X fat and then yeah put them on the root once you've done that you'll connect it to your system you'll come here we'll go into package installer and then you should see all your package files there and I have a small game here just to demonstrate with which is a PT uh, so I'll go ahead and install that now All right, so you can see that the package installed and it says it is ready to use. If we back out and go to our home screen, you can see that now PT is here. And by the way, anytime you install these games, you will have to run Hen, the Mira Hen, or some other Hen that comes out later on first in order to run these games. Of course, if you have a game on the disc itself you don't need to do that you just put in the disc and go if you want to play it uh, from the disc uh, so anyway that's how you do that I warn you be careful when you install these package files for right now keep it to games and as long as those games require 505 or less they should work on here just fine if you are going to install package files that are homebrews or apps or something always make sure that they are certified to be working on 505 and not something else because then you can run into problems all right so the next thing is the web browser now the web browser is actually really easy once you run this mirror hen it will and it should perma unlock or perma enable your browser this means later on even for future uh, kexploits if they come out and you have to update the browser should remain enabled now if you don't see it the only thing you need to do is go into the library and then uh, scroll till you find the internet browser and then just start it and when you're done just escape out of it and when you come here 
then it should be on your home screen permanent like. Now the next thing is that I need to mention is the FTP real quick. Oh, and by the way, now that it's permanently enabled, you can watch the next video and the next video when I release it, I'll put the link in the description. It will show you how to host these files yourself um, and just watch that video so you know how to set that up. Uh, the next thing is FTP. We can go here to the user guide. And by the way, you can, you, you know, you can leave the DNS settings the way you want once you've hosted your own files and you put them wherever you want via the web browser, then you can change them and just set it to automatic so that way they go back to default. So let's go into 505 and let's go into FTP. And then you are, there you go, done. Now pay close attention here to the upper left screen. It tells you your IP and then your port. I think the port on this will always be 1337, but anyway, that's what you're going to type into FileZilla whenever you want to transfer files over. You'll, you'll type the IP and the uh, port. In case you forget what the IP is, you could always go into your um, settings, into your network settings, and just look at your, uh, your information here, view connection status and you can see your IP is right there. The, and then you can come down here and you can see it's the IP address right there, the 192, 168, whatever. All right, and that's pretty much it guys for now. Don't forget to watch the next video uh, where I'm going to show you how to set up and host your own files on your whatever device, whatever device you wanna use as a server.